How's it guys? Kirk here from Go Fish and today we are talking about poppers. This is without doubt my favorite, favorite form of fishing. The surface fishing, the surface action and poppers specifically really, really get me going when it comes to surface fishing and fishing in general. The, the explosion, the bite that you get when casting and working poppers is unlike anything else that you can experience in fishing and it's super exciting. That fish coming right out the water, barreling on your lure, it's absolutely incredible. So um, we just thought we'd go through some basic, basic things that you'd be able to use um, when you're walking into a tackle shop to be able to decipher which uh, popper to get and which ones to stay away from depending on the fish that you want to target as well as um, also just a little bit on the action of how to work a popper and that to be able to get the desired results. So generally um, I'll start off by saying that profile for me, profile and, um, and action on a lure trumps the color of a lure without doubt. Um, so it's always good to go with firstly the right profile for the fish that you're going to be targeting. So if you're going to be targeting big GTs um, and bigger fish, you're generally going for a bigger lure. But never forgetting that you also want something that has a bit more of a smaller profile because most of the bait fish that are in, especially off the waters of KZN, but also off the waters in Mozambique and that sort of thing, what we've found is this works really, really well. Even if the water is 300, 400 meters deep, we fish this off the coast of Mozambique where you can see and pick up tuna on the finder and on the sounder, or if you see tuna come up on the surface and feed on bait fish and then disappear. If generally the fish are coming up on the surface and as you get to them, they disappear and they're sounding and they're really skittish, it's a really good idea to throw something like this because what that essentially does is it's going to call those fish up from the bottom um, with the dispersion that you're creating on the surface from that cup face that's dispersing all this water and creating a disturbance on the surface and those fish are going to come in and zone in and really smash the hell out of this popper. So that works exceptionally well in your deep water. Not saying that you're not going to be fishing it in shallower water because your G big GTs we found especially this lure, the wild dog series from, uh, from Kingfisher works really really well for those big jeets they really can't resist that massive disturbance and explosion on the surface which this lure gives it's going to be quite hard to work this one but it is really a good lure to keep in your arsenal it also works really really well when the conditions get a little bit rougher but you still want to keep a popper in the water um, you can't really fish poppers in too rough a water sort of calm to moderate but you want to make sure that the lure has got constant contact with the water if that lure barrel rolls out of the water or it comes flying out the water, that fish is going to be lost. Rougher conditions generally don't work too well for poppers. That's when you're going to be switching to uh, sinking stick baits and that. But um, this one we found really does keep nicely uh, and, and keeps contact with the water nicely. But you've obviously just got to time your pops when it gets a little bit rougher so you can keep it in the water. And the reason why it works so well is because it disperses a lot of the water. And in that chop, those fish can pick up that, um, that disturbance. Moving on to your slightly thinner poppers, um, a bit of a thinner profile, it has got a smaller face, thinner face or narrower face I should say, and less of a concave. Something like this you're going to be able to work all day, but it's not necessarily the best popper for the job when you're targeting different species. So this is something that you are generally casting with a plugging rod, keeping it at a 45 and, and just winding it. Uh, and sort of making it skip along the surface. This will dart along the surface, it'll dive, it'll come back out and carry on. Um, you can also pop with it as well. And generally what this, what this bait is doing is, as soon as you pull it, it's collecting air inside that uh, concave. And what, essentially what that's doing is as, as you're pulling it through the water, those air bubbles are being released and it's releasing a bubble trail behind the bait itself. And that's what often, when you get that bubble trail, you know you're onto something because that's what's going to bring those fish up. When they see that bubble trail, they'll see the bubble trail and they'll see the lure and they'll come up and smash it. So, um, yeah, this is also, you can see, is a bit more of a smaller profile. I've got two trebles on here. Um, generally, guys, when it comes to hooks and lures, you're just going to have to test uh, what works because the hooks really play an integral part, part in the action of the lure. And generally, if uh, the lures come rigged with trebles. That's generally the reason being is because they fish often better with trebles. But having a look on the box, having a look online and researching your lure will go a long way to giving you the answers you need from sizes to what you should be fishing. Um, so whether you should be fishing with a baker rig in the front or maybe a single in the front and a treble at the back or two trebles or two singles. 
it all makes a big difference in how that lure responds and reacts. If you're not 100% sure, if you can't find the desired info that you want to be able to see how or, 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 or what the, the best way to rig these lures is, you're going to have to test it out yourself. Um, and we often do that. So a very important uh, part of making sure your, your, your popper is rigged correctly is, firstly, make sure, especially if you're targeting bigger fish, that you are going with the correct hooks. You're going with really heavy duty hooks, heavy duty split rings. Um, we found that the BKK range works exceptionally well. Uh, Mustard also bring up out some really good singles. Uh, the Mustard Kaijus, ST76s from Gamagatsu are all really, really good um, hooks. But you've got to make sure that you up your gauge of your hooks, the strength of your hooks, as well as the split rings if you're targeting bigger fish like GTs and that, because they really are going to test your tackle. But it's vitally important and just as important to make sure that the weight that your hooks that your hook set is not going to hamper the lure and its action in any way. The moment you put hooks on that are too heavy, the lure is going to sink. If you put on hooks that are too light, it's not going to be sitting correctly in the water when you're going to, before you pop. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the, 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 the lure come out the water more, it's going to be tumbling more, it's not going to be giving you that desired action. So it's vitally important to make sure that you get the weight of your hooks correct and, and your hook set up correct before, even before you start targeting those fish. So essentially what you want is you want your lure to either sit, sit at like a 45 to the water on a popper, on a stick bait, if it's sitting straight up, perfect. If it's sitting at a little bit of an angle, that's okay too. But generally what you want is you don't want to go past that 45 degree angle on a popper. You want them sitting in the water like that. And the reason being is, so as soon as you pull that, that uh, pull on that swivel, that's your main line pulling, that popper is going to be going nose first into the water and it's going to start grabbing water from the bottom, that bottom lip straight away from your first pop. Uh, and often, especially with cheats, your smash and your, and your hit comes within those sort of first three to five pops. Um, so it's important to get that going, get that lure uh, and the action of that lure working right from the outset uh, to give you the best uh, shot at getting the bite. If you guys are looking for uh, a good all-round popper, something that you can throw all day long, um, it's not as sort of hectic on the arms and shoulders and that sort of thing because it is really tiring fishing a bait like this. The Hulko Haymaker makes a really, really good popper and you can see that the cup face is a little bit smaller but it also disperses a hell of a lot of water. So um, the Kingfisher Rattler series also is a really nice uh, series to look at. They make a really good popper, really cost effective popper and the nice thing about those, those, uh, those Rattler poppers as well is that your colouring and that sort of thing is all on the inside of the actual lure itself. So it's actually covered by um, a resin or a clear coat. So you're never going to lose the shine of, uh, of the color on that popper. So um, that's a nice little thing about the, uh, about the Kingfisher Atlas series. So <clears throat> if you're wanting to go for a popper that you're able to cast all day, go for something with maybe a slightly smaller cup face. But you want that concave in there. It's vitally important to have that concave in there so you can disperse a lot of water when you're popping. Guys, that's pretty much it on the, the poppers side of things. Really, really basic intro to poppers. Um, we're going to get a lot more in-depth and tip, uh, pro tips to come. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for poppers.